first part of the fourth lab for introduction to fluid mechanics. In this lab, we're going to use a Pascal apparatus to demonstrate the Pascal principle. So the learning objective for this lab is to demonstrate that the pressure in a liquid varies with depth and it does not depends on shape or area. Just a quick review of Newton's law of viscosity. We also covered this part in our lab two. Um, it says for a given temperature and pressure, the shear stress between adjacent fluid layers is proportional to the velocity gradient between the two layers. The fluids, those that follows this law are called Newtonian fluid, and those fluids that doesn't follow this law are called non-Newtonian fluids. In this lab, we're going to use a water that is um, a Newtonian fluid for our lab. So another review of our Pascal principle, which says in a fluid at rest in a closed container, a pressure change in one part is transmitted without any loss to every portion of the fluid. And it acts at right angle to the wall of the container. This principle can be mathematically presented as rho g h, or you can also say rho g del h. So del h should be changed in height. And rho is the density of the liquid, in this case, density of water, and g is the gravitational acceleration that we know, 9.81 meter per second square. We will demonstrate that the intensity of pressure depends on the depth of the water and does not affect by the shape of the container. The dimensions are given on the right side of the slide. So let us introduce ourselves with our setup. In our Pascal apparatus, we have three alternative vessel. One is um, parallel, one is conical shape, and one is tapered inward. And we're gonna, each of them is mounted with a screw, so we can mount each of them on top of um, this setup here. We also have a um, drain valve here. If there is a water we need to drain, we can drain from this valve. We have a counterbalance, this weight, if you can see, this one is our counterbalance. We have pivot here and then here we also have the lever arm that is this one and this is the sliding mass this can slide along the arm we also have a level gauge when the bubble is in the middle so we can say it is level and we can take the reading we also have a, a diaphragm and this is the o-ring we're going to use to attach the diaphragm below this setup using the o-ring. We also have the adjustable pointer that's gonna go on this rod and we're gonna use it to measure the water level. So the water depth is same for all of the vessel. I have placed the diaphragm here you can see with the o-ring so what I did I took the uh, lever here take this way down and slide in the diaphragm all the way through and then I use the o-ring to tighten the diaphragm so that it holds uh, on the system so if we can see from the top Inside we have the diaphragm, so when we put the vessel on top of this one, squid here, the water pressure will be on top of the diaphragm. And underneath the diaphragm we have the 
balance. So the water pressure will make this one to go this way and then we have to use the counterweight to balance the system. And this is how we're gonna take data. Next, I have fitted the parallel vessel onto the system and I have also put the indicator on the rod. So I will fill the parallel vessel up to the top uh, at the pointer point um, of the indicator. So there is no water in our uh, vessel. I need to balance the system first. What I'm going to do is that put the sliding mask closer to the first mark here. And then now you see it's not balanced, the bubble. So I have to adjust this counter mass so that they are balanced. Once it's balanced, I have to lock it. Now I can lock the counterweight so it cannot move. Once you lock it, just give it a deep press, see if it's balanced. So it's balanced. Now, now I'm going to slowly add the water and you will see the balance goes off. You see, it's, it's, it's not balanced anymore. I'm going to keep adding water. So I have to balance this one. You have to take the water height from the bottom of the uh, diaphragm to the uh, top of the water surface. And I'm going to balance, move the weight to balance it. I have refilled the parallel tube. Now I'm going to again balance this one until the bubble goes inside. Okay. The apparatus is leaking a little bit. So now you see the bubble is balanced. So what we have to do is that take again the measurement from the pivot to the length from here using a ruler. And again take the water height from here to the water surface. You can take different water height. This is the second attempt. And now we're going to change this one to this one and this vessel and we are going to repeat the same test. So I have drained the water. Now I have to remove the parallel um, vessel. All I have to do is that take this uh, indicator off. This bar will keep me reminding the places where I um, the indicator was. So now I have to change the uh, vessel. So I have put the conical vessel. Again, I'm gonna fill the water up to the same height that we did it for the second time. So I'm gonna just add water. And it's going unbalanced. So I just go on tilt to touching this one. And then I have to adjust the moving mass sliding mast until the bubble comes into the middle, you see. The length, after again measure the length from this one, the center, to the center of the pivot, here, this one. I think I went a little bit of more water than I should, so let's drain it a little bit. And now it's about right. Okay, now adjust a little bit. Okay, so this is now balanced. So now um, I have to change the vessel again. Now we have to do the same thing for the tapper vessel. I'm just adding water until it touches the top surface. It's not properly sealed, that's why it is leaking water. But uh, the same thing for our uh, tapper shape. I'm just slowly adding water. Uh, until the pointer touches the water little more now see the water level are the same and it is balanced at the same position where the conical shape was there so the length is the same so now this is we have collected the data all we have to do is that 
uh, do your calculation. I'm going to drain the water and submit your report. As our test is very simple and the data collection process is also simple, even without doing much of a calculation, you can just see that it's valid as long as your sliding mass is same for all different types of shape. So that was our first part of the fourth lab test. Next, we'll do our fifth, uh, second part of our lab, which will be Archimedes principle. And afterward, we'll do our fifth lab test, where we'll do flow measurement using a feed up tube. Till then, stay safe. Thank you.